just sad to say, you know, he's one of my best friends. We all in my family, my girlfriend, Chris Maria Gonzalez. He's an incredible actor as well. Uh, and he was my roommate uh, at Rutgers University. I graduated from Rutgers Mason Girls with a degree of BFA in acting. And he was my roommate. Uh, he was a gay man. And he wouldn't have every super, any stereotype or uh, cliche, he breaks them all. He's a strong, vulnerable man. And I really, uh, I thought a lot about him. There are more gay men and women like that than there are the cliches. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To be able to portray that, it takes a lot of um, intelligence. So that's your yeah. choice. Um, and as far as um, working with the idea of anger management, were you able to explore and therapy groups? You know, we're, we're lucky with the show. We have a resources available for the session. I think in this day and age, we're all angry uh, with the environment that we are sort of been brought to, right? So I think it's not very hard for me to channel uh, anger. There are a lot of things that I've said uh, that I wish I could do something about, and that we all try to do something about, politically, socially, and uh, economically. Yeah. So no, it's, uh, it wasn't too hard to get into the anger management stuff, but uh, definitely boxing. We found out the other day that where we filmed in Marin County, there have been uh, boxing programs that have started up as a result of the show to help anger management kids in innovation classes and innovation and programs and things like that. Because of 13 Reasons Why, because of Tony's journey, they've implemented mm -hmm. these boxing sessions and it's uh, surreal for me to see the impact that's had on the community, uh, as particularly as that, you know, the boxing lessons. So, uh, it turns out to be a good deal of a It's great, yeah, it's a great um, light to shine on. This anger and the in high school, which is even hard to just go on, and the idea of rape, and it just speaks to what's currently happening now. So it's wonderful that we can identify with all these aspects and just be so um, open about it and talk about it. Now, what, what, do, you, what do you like most about Tony? His courage. I wish we were all the tenth as courageous as he is. I mean, he's unapologetic for himself. He's uh, He's not afraid to stand up for what he believes in and has a very uh, highly tuned moral compass. And I think that we would all benefit to uh, lean a little more into that. He has conviction. Uh, so people always say, what do you like most about him? I think it's that. Because uh, I wish I was a little bit um, more courageous. Yes, yes. He has a good um, way of judging you. Absolutely. Yes. And it's also a fault. Mm -hmm. He can be stubborn uh, in his own way. And what's the most challenging um, aspect? He's just emotionally complex. So there are choices that he makes that are 90% one thing and 10% the other, and sometimes it's more interesting to play than 10%. And uh, it's a challenge uh, to be good, I guess, to try and be good. So that's uh, And the writing is uh, always in there, so it's, that's a challenge on set to grab with the writing. And I gotta say, it's been really fun. Yes. If I sum up the experience, it's been two years now, we're very lucky to be going back for the third year. It's humbling, it's a huge responsibility, but it's fun. The show, the showrunners, the actors, the producers, everyone on set, they really make this a labor of love. And so it's not going to work every day. It's, um, it's a gift to wake up and go and do what we do. And what I really enjoyed about the show is the diversity. Diversity is one of those things where it's a word that it's a, it's a hot word I think mean, everyone throws it out there. Uh, I think we've done a good job with our show of trying at least to um, cast outside the box and to think outside of the box in, in terms of story. We could go further. We could go further in our show. We could go further in Netflix and film and media in general. Um, you know, there's still a lot of uh, token characters that Latinos are playing, and Blacks are playing, and Asians are playing. I mean, Asians are barely in TV. Period. There were Indian characters. When was the last time you saw an Asian Indian Latino uh, Indian? Not many. Uh, so we can go further in terms of that. Um, I hope this year you know, I'll have a little bit more say in the writers and producers and whatnot. We'll try and push that. That's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in uh, if people of color will be writing them. We've had thousands of years of writing them. We've been believing that. So that's kind of the work. Exactly, and it's not the real world. No, it's not. We, I mean, we you know, we say we're minorities, but it's vastly from the opposite. Like, you know, so uh, I'm wondering most other questions. So I think 
that's what I'm that's what I'm about to do. So when I'm not doing that, it's a little bit of a depression between jobs and want to find the next one. Um, it's definitely nice to know we're coming back. <laughs> and I have a job for another uh, six or seven months, that's nice. Um, I read a lot. I met my girlfriend and uh, I'm not gonna relax and that's pretty much it. Get ready to go back and do this again for another six months. Do you see yourself directing, writing? I, <laughs> yes, uh, I love acting. That's my first love. I think I'm a better director than I am an actor. I'm excited. I see that. Oh, yeah. I think I, I have a sense of the whole. I think that's my trouble as an actor. I like to. Directors have an interesting time directing. Uh, but yeah, I want to direct and I want to write. I write in there. I design, I've been designing suits with my friend David Adam for years and years. I want to branch out into that. I want to diversify. Latino excellence, right? I've been hearing a lot of black excellence, but yes. Latino excellence as well. I know, we're so, we're so talented. We have beautiful voices. We have the skilled senator. Uh, uh, the congressman, I should say, she just won the election. Yes. She's a Latina. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 How are you doing, Christian? Um, I wanted to know, um, so when it comes to the character Tony, what about him can you say you find relatable? Um, is there anything about him you can relate to, or was it one of those characters that you had to dig your, deep into yourself to bring out of you? No, I think I, Tony's pretty close to home in terms of uh, how I relate to him in regards to his family, how he feels about his friendships, loyalty, all of those things. Uh, I have a really tight-knit group of friends that I would do anything for those four or five months. Uh, I could relate immediately to that aspect. That was my way in, really, for Tony. And then the other things, like I said, um, I'm not gay, so people always go, well, how did you prepare to be a gay act? Well, it's just love. It's just two people who love each other. And I know what that feels like. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was my way in terms of uh. Anybody else? Hi. Um, first of all, I want to say that this is so surreal because me and my husband used to watch it every single night. And <laughs> <laughs> one thing that I can say is that um, a couple of the scenes are very triggerous. Um, was there anything in um, in the series or in the shows or while you were acting that kind of triggered you um, or or you felt very close to home while you were acting it? I don't think any of it triggered me per se because I haven't had to deal with some of the hardships that are well, triggering some of the hardships that other characters do. But it all is a call and it all, I am repelled by all of it. Uh, it's just my job to go and control the thing and, and to do that justice and to tell the truth to So you have to get over the fact that it's disgusting and luckily, I'm not involved in a lot of those scenes. Uh, so I don't have to do it. The women in the show, they grapple with that every day. So those are the, the true heroes of our production. Uh, Alicia Bo and Catherine Langford and all the other, Kate Walsh and the other women who have to grapple with these issues. And uh, Devin Druid, who deals with the sexual assessment, uh, Tyler uh, Dallas character. Um, I'm sort of the good guy in the show, so I haven't had to deal with a lot of that stuff as of yet. Um, but it is all appalling, and I don't know by it, as I said. Um, but that's the point of doing the show, to put it out there, to, to hold a mirror up to society, but this is going on, not to trigger. And that's why we're so diligent and, uh, and uh, respectful of any individual who's, who's been triggered by it or has the potential to be triggered by it. Anybody else? Yeah. Hi, I'm I want to say congratulations for um, the work that you do. I'm, I'm here with my son, and we're like fans of the show. He's only 15, and he's so excited um, <laughs> to come and, and meet you. Um, and as a parent, I want to know what's the reaction when kids like him 
get to see you up close? Do they open up to you because they can relate and sometimes I feel like they see us. You know, like you guys become the voices of the things that are happening. But yeah, so it, there's, it's a double-sided answer, okay? First thing is Netflix. Netflix is incredible because you get to sit at home or on the train or wherever is comfortable, comfortable for you uh, experience this program, right? So what happens with fans of the show, and people who have been affected by the show, is because we're in your homes for 13 hours at your convenience, you do develop a relationship with us, the actors, uh, that's a little bit more personal and personable than you would with a Brad Pitt or an Angelina Jolie, because these are people you see on screen every once in a while when you go to the movies. So my experience has been that fans do have a strong connection to the, to the actors. Um, and it's a, it's a responsibility but a blessing for us that anyone would feel comfortable enough to open up to us and to share. We do experience that all the time. Um, and, but that's the point of the show, is to give people the power and the courage to be that vulnerable and to say, this is who I am, this is what I've been through, and now I'm trying to heal. Uh, and all of us on the show have dealt with, with, with that in some way. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's life-changing, really, to see that you're making a, a positive impact in someone else's life. Uh, two and a half years ago, I never in a million years would have had a team, you know, but that had a global show is released in 190 countries. There's people all over the world who are uh, connected. And I think with what the great thing about acting in theater and film is that it does allow you to relate to these characters and to identify things in yourself that maybe you um, haven't been able to because you see someone else going through these things. Um, that's why I fell in love with art, why I fell in love with film and TV was a way to relate and to escape. Thank you for watching. <laughs>
Yes, I am personally aware, and we are taking conscious steps to, to uh, reverse this in, in all the things. As a Latino, it's important. Yes, I'm an actor, but I am who I am first. And that's a little equal from the South Bronx. And these issues are We have time for one more. Good evening. I have a question, just uh, observation. Um, growing up, I remember Isaiah Morales, and I'm glad that he's still around, and I see a similar career for you, longevity, <laughs> taking us to another level, and I like it. <laughs> I know you mentioned that you had the support of your family around you. Um, just wanted to ask, in those moments where you had people doubting you or you were doubting yourself, um, how did you overcome those emotions and wanting to pursue acting, you know, as a career? And I guess these two questions, sorry. <laughs> and um, at that, what moment did you feel you were really sure that this is what you wanted to do? I think in order to do this job, you've got to be a little crazy. Because it's, some, it's the only profession I'm aware of that you are rejected 99% of the time. So it's a little bit of a blood of punishment, right? A lot of punishment. I think I knew I wanted to do it since I was three or four years old. I didn't commit to it until I was a sophomore in high school. And I decided I was going to, I attended Ford and Prep High School for two years and I decided I wanted to attend a performing arts high school. Um, but it is the kind of dream, if you want to do it professionally, it's the kind of job and dream that you have to dedicate yourself to 100%. There isn't a fallback. And that's controversial to say because you have teachers who will say, or parents or, or family members who will say, we need a backup plan. This is not, you know, this is crazy. It's not going to work, so you got to get a degree in this, or make sure you know a hundred other things you could do. I think if you prepare to fail, you won't fail. Um, so when I decided that I was going to do it 100 percent, there is no alternative for me. So it was success, or I would be an unsuccessful actor for 65, 75 years. So um, I'd say to your brother, go take some acting classes if he has that feeling. That love, that passion, it's, it's uh, irrefutable and easily recognizable for anyone. It doesn't have to be about acting. You know what you love doing and how it makes you feel that way. If he feels that way, like I said, tenacity and courage. 99% uh, of the people are going to tell you no and they're not good enough. You just have to have a resolve and an immovable uh, belief in yourself. That's, it's going to be success or uh, nothing at all. Do all. Good luck to you, brother. Thank you. Yes, I agree, and also more so for We have to be so very yes, quick. Yes, roles. That was nice and more difficult for us to be assisted in this year as well. There's no backup plan. I just have a quick question. When it comes, it could be a When it comes to acting, and a person wants to be an actress, a child, per se, um, is there any stereotype? to be an actress, like faith-wise? I, I would say 25 years ago, yeah, we had to all look the same. You know, there, there was a cookie cutter image on TV. Uh, I think it's changing. I think it should be changing quicker, but it is changing. I think if there is a place for everyone in the world, and uh, media and entertainment, theater, TV, film, is starting to reflect that more and more. Uh, at the time of there are no for everyone. So, not if you love it, uh, there will be a place for you in this community. And that's why I feel like